Good evening, everyone. I'm Carol Waters. I'm um, here at home again tonight uh, doing our fourth garden webinar. And so excited to see so many people um, sticking with me this spring. Excited to have all of you with me here. And tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about succulents. Um, they've become super trendy in the last couple of years for very good reason. They're beautiful. They're hardy as all get out. They're hard to kill. And um, they're just fun little plants. And even if you have limited light and limited space, succulents are a great um, addition to an apartment, to a house, to really anywhere. So I really have to start by giving a shout out to a friend of mine, Dennis Morgison. He is the County Extension Agent for Horticulture in Washington County, Kentucky. He developed this presentation and was gracious enough to loan it to me for this evening. So um, if you're on Facebook, he has some great videos as well. You might go uh, find him in Washington County. So the first question of the night is actually a poll, and we've never done a poll before. So the question is, which are the native habitats of succulents? I'm going to give you a few seconds to vote. Is it desert wastelands, mountaintops, jungles? near oceans or all of the above. All right, and I've got most folks. And most of you are right. It is um, all of the above. We find succulents in deserts, mountaintops, jungles, near oceans. So they have a wide, broad, extreme range. So what is a succulent? A succulent is any plant with a thick, fleshy water storage ocean organ. Um, they store water in their leaves, stems, or their roots. So it could be any part of the plant, honestly. And these plants have adapted to survive in arid conditions uh, throughout the world from Africa to North America, but they also survive in jungles where it's very humid conditions. And here in the Midwest where we have very temperate conditions. So succulents are very, very adaptable to extreme and harsh conditions and very mild conditions. Succulents are super popular right now. Uh, anywhere you go, if you look on Pinterest, if you look on Facebook, a lot of folks are talking about succulents and they always seem to be in the, the magazines right now of how you uh, personalize your home. Uh, my sister has the brownest thumb out there, but even she has succulents in her house. So there's over 10,000 species worldwide, so there's something for everybody. Succulents are about 3% of the flowering plants of the world. So they make up a small portion, but there's a lot of variety still. They are beautiful and nearly indestructible. They're interesting plants with a variety of plant shapes and leaves, and they are super easy to propagate. So succulents, like other plants, they need light, the right temperature, water, potting soil, fertilizer, and a good location. And that's similar to every other plant that we talk about. So when we talk about light, they do prefer a bright light, like a south facing window, um, but they can also handle an east window where it gets a lot of morning light and some shade in the afternoon. Some succulents will scorch if given direct light, so they need something more filtered. The leaves can turn brown or white as they bleach out. And under, underlit succulents will stretch and elongate. We call this etoliation. <laughs> and it just means it stretches it. So they, they try to grow towards the light. Succulents are more cold tolerant than most people give them credit for. 
Um, they prefer daytime temps between 70 to 85 and nighttime between 50 and 55. So we're not quite ready to set out those pots of succulents yet. I would wait probably another month before we start getting consistently 70 to 85 and that, especially that nighttime of 50 to 55. We're still having some fairly cold nights here in Iowa, so we really want to make probably wait till mid-May, at least after Mother's Day. So when we talk about watering, um, succulents should be watered generously in the summer and then allow to dry completely between waterings. The thing that we tend to do to succulents that causes them problems is love them to death. Um, we, we feel like they need to be watered every day and we love the plant to death. So allow them to really dry between waterings during the winter the indoor plants should only be watered once or twice a month. So again, don't love them to death because overwatering is the single biggest cause of death in succulents. So signs of overwatering, if you've ever loved a succulent to death, they tend to get a little soft and discolored. And here's where you really need to know what is normal for that plant. Um, I always try to tell folks to really do a little research and know what's normal. Uh, my favorite story is I gave my mom a, a small plant one time and it was a specialty conifer that had yellow foliage when there was new growth. And she had kept it on her, her uh, uh, cabinet through the winter because it was very small in a forage pot. And in the spring, I was visiting her and it looked great. It was bright yellow. It was super pretty. I was admiring it from across the kitchen and mom looked at me. She goes, man, I don't know what I've done to it to kill it. I said, what do you mean? She goes, it, look at it. It's yellow. Well, she didn't know that yellow was the normal. So same with succulents. You want to know what the normal looks like. So we tend to laugh about that still. So other signs of um, overwatering, you want to remove from the pot and inspect the roots if they're brown and rotted. You want to remove those dead roots. They also, if it's been kept very damp, it might have a yeasty smell, which would um, indicate a root rot. So you can actually just take a cutting from the mother plant and repot a new, new cutting and just start a whole new plant and if you think your plant's on the decline. Signs of underwatering is it'll stop growing. It just won't do anything. It may shed some leaves. It may develop some brown spots on the leaves. You've probably seen this in, if you've ever had an aloe vera plant that maybe got a little too big for the pot or two people were watering it, but one didn't know the other one was watering it and the, the, the leaves started to kind of turn brown and papery. So that would be underwatering if no one was watering it. Um, watering in pots, if you use a glazed pot, that's going to hold it, hold the water longer. And unglazed clay pots will lose moisture quicker. Plastic is going to be somewhere in between. Fertilizer, the good thing is succulents don't require a lot of fertilizer. Um, during the summer, you want to fertilize them like you would your other house plants that you've set out on a deck or a patio. Uh, feed them monthly with a quarter strength water soluble fertilizer. So you want to mix it up according to the directions and then water it down by three quarters. <laughs> you want to avoid fertilizing during the winter. You don't want a lot of excess growth in the winter because that's using all their stores and they won't flower as well during the summer. You can also mix pellet fertilizer into a soil mixture so it's more of a leave it and forget about it. And that tends to be the direction I take. I'll pause a minute to see if there's any questions. Potting soils for succulents 
they need to be planted in a really fast draining mixture. You think about those climates that I talked about, jungles, beaches, deserts, they're all very sandy climates, sandy soils. So for a good mixture, if you're mixing up your own, we recommend four quarts of medium grit sand, four quarts of perlite, four quarts of potting soil, and a half a cup of bone meal. And the bone meal provides calcium and some nutrients. You can also just use a potting soil with perlite. That works just as well. But if you really want to mix your own, this is what we recommend is the sand, perlite, and potting soil in equal amounts. So location really depends on the succulent. Um, most do best outdoors in the summer and brought in before mid-September. So we want to set them out a little bit after Mother's Day, before Memorial Day, and bring them in just after Labor Day. Because that's when our weather starts getting a little iffy at day and night. Succulents should be acclimated to to the move outdoors, otherwise sunburn. So we're having some warmer days and we could start easing them out if they're easy to move. Um, set them out in a slightly shaded place and then ease them into, gradually ease them into full sun. And depending on the con or conifer, the succulent, um, some may actually prefer shade. So again, study what you have and what they prefer. And the plant will tell you. Just like any other plant, succulents will tell you what they prefer, where they're happiest. If you're gonna plant succulents in the ground, they have to be hardy. If you have clay soils, we don't have super clay soils. Again, this was developed in Kentucky and they have severely clay soils. But if you do have a clay soil amend with some sandy soil, Make sure you elevate and mound the area with dirt so the water can drain quickly. You want to use a mulch or a top dressing to retain the water. Pea gravel, lava rock, bark work best. You want to use large boulders for focal points and then agaves, yuccas, and some aloes. Um, ice plants, columnar cactus will take full day or sun. And we can grow all of those here in in Iowa as well. So there's 10 main groups of succulents um, and they range from agaves up to ice plants and cactus, even daisies are considered a succulent based on their storage systems. We're going to talk about a few groups tonight, our common succulents, and before we get into that, are there any questions? Okay. Eonium is a fairly small genus. It has about 35 species, and they're mostly native to um, East Africa, Morocco, Canary Islands. And you've probably seen these. These are all uh, pretty common to find in the nurseries and greenhouses anymore. Again, succulents, super, super trendy. So you can find a lot of these pretty easily right now. But these have a wide, wide range of uh, colors and textures, but they all have that same uh, leaf structure around that's whirled around a base. And I think this is one of my favorites. So I tend to like these. And again, all of these super slow growing, very showy. What I like about succulents, you plant them and forget them for the most part, and these are no exception to that. Aloes, uh, we've all probably heard of aloes. It's a genus of over 500 species. It has a huge native range, anywhere from Africa to North and South America, Australia, India, India, Mediterranean, Arabic nations. I mean, all over the world, you will find aloe plants. And 
again, a wide variety of leaf structures, um, leaf lengths, uh, different flowering structures. So don't be fooled when you look at something and think, I think that's an aloe. It probably is because there are tons of them. And they all have the same um, medicinal effect, the aloe gel. Just so any questions? If you're like me, you grew up the aloe in the grandmother's kitchen, um, couldn't hardly kill it. Another one that we see a lot of is agaves. Um, they contain around 200 species, native mostly to Mexico and the Caribbean. And they aren't as hardy planted in the ground. So you wanna look for agaves that are maybe a little smaller that you can move in and out of the house for Iowa. Ah, we have a question. Uh, yes, and we're going to get to hens and chicks in just a minute. So Crashula is a genus contains about 200 species native to eastern South Africa, but you can find these again in most nurseries around here. These are a little harder to um, identify because as you can see from the variety, the leaf structure looks very, very different from plant to plant. This is where you start getting into a little more specific plants and really needing to know what normal looks like. Dudleya is a genus that came, contains 45 species and this is native to, this is one of the few that is native just to North America and it's Southwest North, North America. So you're gonna see a lot of these native in Arizona, New Mexico, that region. But we, we plant a lot of them. If you go into Southern California, you'll see a lot of these. Down here on the lower left corner is one that's related to, um, I just lost it, related to one that we commonly plant here in Iowa. Um, and I'll think about it here in a minute. But you can see a wide variety. Again, super slow growing, but fun. They're festive, a lot of variety. Echeveria. So this is our hens and chicks that um, Catherine had asked about. And it, it has about 100 species. It's native to Texas and Argentina. Again, lots of colors, lots of variety. These guys are slow growing, but if you've ever grown up with hens and chicks, you know that one day it's just the one or the three that you planted and you turn around and one day it's 20 of them. But easy to, to propagate, easy to spread. It's a great plant to share. Lots of fun, really hardy around here. Euphorbias tend to get into more of the cactus-like succulents. They contain about 2,000 species. So euphorbias are by far one of our largest succulent groups. It's native to tropical and subtropical regions of Africa and the Americas. Um, this is where you're gonna find cacti mostly, but huge variety, an interesting variety, a, a very different type of plant. They're known for their fleshy stems and their spines. Gasteria is, a, is split with multiple species. Um, it's kind of hard to uh, separate these from aloes a lot, just based on their structures. You've probably seen some plants called living rocks. There's some of the Gasteria genus or Gasteria species in that. You'll hear them called living rocks. Graptopetalum 
is a really small genus and it's native to Mexico and Arizona, but it, it mostly has that traditional green pink tinge to it. So you'll see them native down there, but they do beautifully in rock gardens and um, succulent beds here in Iowa. And it gives a nice color. Here's another one that we would classify as a living rock, Haworthia. <laughs> and we get this one mixed up with aloe a lot of times too. And the difference is Haworthia doesn't make that gel on the inside of the leaves. So when you take the leaves off, there's not, there's not gonna be as much water. It's not gonna be as gooey, I guess is the best way to say it. But it has some interesting characteristics. A lot of them have um, that white uh, stripe effect. You'll see some like the upper left-hand corner has that blue and white stripe effect to it. They're a little more stripey than our aloes but they often get mistaken for aloes. This is one you might not think of as a landscape plant. Uh, we see it a lot more as a potted plant, the Kalanka's uh, genus. It has about 125 species. Um, you see them mostly as potted houseplants a lot of times, but again, this is one that's easy to get really mixed up because the leaf patterns are very, very different between the species. This is what we typically think of when we think, think of flowering um, succulents is the Kalankos genera. This is one I love, it's called Sansevieria. You may have heard it called mother-in-law's tongue. Um, we sell these a lot on college campuses because they are almost impossible to kill. They come from West Africa and the Congo region. You can't kill these guys, just cannot kill them. They're super easy to propagate. It's one of the first things they teach you in college is how to propagate these guys, which is just cut off the end of a leaf and put it in some soil. And it doesn't even have to be particularly good soil. You just uh, stick it in the ground. It does have a bloom to it you have to abuse the plant to make it bloom. Um, it needs a lot of dark and a lot of dry uh, time before it actually blooms. So this is one of those, again, you sit it in the pot and you forget that it's there. Sedums, I think almost everybody knows sedums. Um, there's about 600 species native to Africa and South America. We grow them all over the place. And they tend to be smaller, more compact, um, might spread a little bit, but they tend to be that dainty looking um, succulent. Benicio, this is one you might not be as uh, familiar with. There's 1,250 species, and it's mostly native to Europe. Um, Greece, Spain, southern Italy, more of the, those tropical areas. They tend to um, have those finer leaves, bright uh, flowers. You don't see as many of the flowers, but they are, they do flower and they can be oranges, reds, and yellows are the most common. The so one I usually have, I, I get to talk most about with people is what's wrong with the succulent. So when people call and say, the leaves are looking a little bleached out, they're, they're not as green as they used to be, or they're just not looking right. Well, did you move it out into the sun recently? Yes, okay. You need to move it to a little bit of shade. Distorted bugs, buds, often that's aphids or thrips. Uh, cottony bits at the roots, always mealy bugs. And with that, you want to discard the soil, wash the pot, and repot the plant. That's the only way to get rid of mealy bugs. Webs and paprika spots, those little red spots, that's always red spider mites. You can just 
spray it with a little isopropyl alcohol. Doesn't take much. You don't have to soak it, but you do want to just spray it down. If it turns sickly look and may have a brown look to it, that could be scale. That can be scraped off. Um, holes in leaves is often snails in Iowa. Collapsed or putty colored leaves, that's frost. Frost damage is, is a problem up, up here. So we want to bring we want to bring those succulents in before that first frost. Squishy stem or trunk, again, that's overwatering. So you want to take cuttings and repot. If it's a loss of sheen and it's starting to shrivel, that's underwatering. That we don't see nearly as much as overwatering though. Elongated leaves mean lack of light. They're trying to find some light, so they stretch. Um, if the plant is supposed to have red or orange leaves instead of green, and um, it's turning green, it means it's being too pampered. <laughs> so we're loving it into being green. Um, you want to stress the plant with a little bit less water and a little more sun, and it'll come right back to that red and orange. You have dry leaves or rosettes. That's normal. You want to just peel those away and kind of like deadheading for succulents, basically. And if you have closed or shrunken rosettes, that could be heat, drought, cold, dormancy. You want to move them under an eave or just leave it alone. A lot of times leaving it alone, the plant will write itself. Uh, do you dilute the isopropyl alcohol? Um, I don't, but I just use 70%. Uh, 90 won't do anything either. It just uh, breaks down the shell of that, of the scale or the um, aphids. But it won't hurt the plant at all if you use 90. It evaporates so fast it won't hurt it. The question was, what um, do you dilute isopropyl alcohol and do you use 70 or 90 percent? And it doesn't matter which one you use and you don't need to dilute it. Any other questions? So this is what we commonly think of when we think of um, succulent in the landscape. We have this idea of these, these pots that are common in the southwest with plants coming out of, these, out of the side. So how to make these, you want to just choose your pots and your plants to begin with. And you always want to buy a few more plants than you planned um, because you really want it to be a little stressed for space. This is not one where we're going to plant them far apart and let them fill in. You want them to stress a little bit because that's how succulents actually are best grown. They, they grow a little bit better when they think that I don't have enough space, so I better grow faster. You want to choose a variety of plant sizes, shapes, and colors, something you like. You want to keep the tall plants on top and the creepers on the side. And you can use pottery shards, landscape fabric, coffee filters to cover the holes on the bottom and add gravel to the bottom of the pot or use succulent and cactus soil. I always add some gravel to the bottom because it is so important to have really good drainage in these pots. And if you get one that does not have um, holes in the bottom, then you wanna take, a, if it's um, pottery, you are going to take a masonry bit you can't use a regular drill bit. You're going to have to get a masonry bit to make those holes. So you want to start at the bottom, fill the pot up to the first level of holes that you come to, put the plants in there, really pack them in, and then slowly backfill up to the next set of holes, and you keep doing that until you're at the top. You want to leave room at the top for about three to five plants, and you want to be careful not to break the foliage. You want to give them as much foliage as possible going into that first season. 
And my favorite uh, direction is number eight, is you literally cram in the last few plants and make sure to pack in enough soil. And then you want to top it all with a little bit of pea gravel. But if you have lava rock, if you have some uh, gravel from a, a aquarium, that works just as well. So we have a few examples, a couple of YouTube videos, and uh, of course Martha Stewart weighed in on uh, strawberry planters with succulents. And I do have a couple of questions. Can you put too many in a pot? The displays always look too full. And no, these just like to be crammed in together. Um, they, they're not like our regular house plants that they get to a point where they're too full. They really like being in a space where they're kind of crammed together. Um, if you've ever watched, again, my grandma's always had aloe vera sitting in the corner of the kitchen where because that's where the most burns happened. Um, they would get a little crowded in the pot and we'd repot them and it would take forever for them to do anything because it puts a lot of energy in making all these roots. So they're gonna put a lot of energy into roots for a long time to fill a big space. So we want them to grow and flourish. You really kind of want them to be a little more root bound. When can you split the baby plants from the original? Have a flapjack succulent with five baby plants. Whenever you want, um, you're, you're good to raise them now, um, to separate them now. Um, is there a ground cover sec succulent that can do well in part shade and perennial? Not really. Um, not, not a succulent. Not in Iowa, unfortunately. Um, what I was trying to think of earlier was rose moths that we grow in pots, um, but not perennial. Hens and chicks would be about as close as we could get, and it's not going to grow very, very fast at all. How do you propagate a jade plant? Pretty simply, you just pull off the jade leaf, uh, dip it in a little rooting hormone and put it in some potting soil. Um, jade plants are really pretty simple. <laughs> you didn't catch Dennis's last name, could you give it again? Sure, Dennis Morgison. He is with UK Cooperative Extension Service in uh, University of Kentucky. He is the horticulture agent in Washington County, Kentucky. And he has a Facebook page like Washington County Horticulture. So he does a great job and um, has some good videos. You just have to adjust some timing on it because Kentucky has about three weeks of growing season on either end on in the spring and the winter that we just don't have. So you just kind of want to watch that timing, but he gives some really great stuff down there. Great questions. So when you get your strawberry pot done, this is what it can look like. You can have uh, big ones, little ones, it doesn't matter, it's whatever you like. And the question is, can they be too full? No, these are very full pots and uh, very happy plants. But look for unusual pots and planters out there. There's a lot of great ideas, a lot of um, simple things you can do that really are fun and different. My favorite was always shoes or boots. We do a lot of those with kids, especially uh, toddlers, wheelbarrows, oak barrels, strawberry pots, hanging baskets, bonsai pots. I've seen them in picture frames uh, with broken pottery, pier gardens, um, pumpkins. You can, you can grow them in pumpkins. So there's a lot of different things you can do with succulents that are a lot of fun. So when we get out of quarantine and we can go to thrift stores and yard sales and things like that again, 
Uh, look for some different pots. These are more of a hypertufa pot uh, that you, we grow succulents in hypertufa a lot of times, but it could be glass containers, pottery containers, um, ceramic containers. This is a one that's on a table, like a tablescape. But I like the shoes. I do. I used to do these with the mothers of preschoolers groups. They bring in their their young and little shoes, and we plant uh, little succulents in it. And the kids love doing that, and the moms like doing that as well. So get creative with it, because they grow anywhere, and it's a lot of fun. This one in the lower left hand is a picture frame. They don't need a lot of space, which is great. They don't like a lot of space, so it fills out nicely. And again, when we talked about glazed containers, they just retain water longer, which means you water them less. So just be careful about not loving them to death. And then this is one of my favorites. Um, they've grown succulents, kind of stuffed it into some driftwood and made a really interesting art piece with it. The only thing I would recommend is if you're gonna do something like that, don't spend a lot of money on it because either it's gonna be really heavy to move or you're gonna to wanna to put it on wheels so you can wheel it in in the winter. But I think this is a really unique and interesting way to use a piece of, of wood, an old tree trunk. You could get really creative with this. These are just a few um, references that you can look at. There's lots of great succulent guides out there. Um, and there's even societies dedicated to succulents. So with that, are there any more questions for this evening? This was probably our fastest webinar. I'll end with, we have one more scheduled so far. Um, I'm trying to get another one for May. So May 4th is Dr. Donald Lewis. He's gonna be talking about horticulture pests. And if you've never heard Dr. Lewis speak, he is wonderful to learn from. He's a lot of fun and I think everybody will really enjoy him. So May 4th at six o'clock, you can sign up through our Facebook page again. And I'll open it one more time for questions. Well, thank you again for joining me on this beautiful Monday evening. Um, we will have this video up on YouTube, our YouTube channel in uh, on the West Pottawatomie Extension YouTube channel probably tomorrow. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us at the Extension, Extension office. Our phone number is 712-366-7070. And we do have one last question of cactus versus succulent. It's semantics. Uh, cactus is a succulent. So it's the same thing. All right, well, you guys have a great week. Happy gardening starting to get warm and we look forward to seeing you here on May 4th with Dr. Donald Lewis. Thanks everyone.